Woo-wee! Women's basketball is here to stay. This state is pumped. Hawkeye Nation is pumped. And the Iowa staff is ready to take advantage of what has been an unforgettable era led by none other than Caitlin Clark. We'll talk about the massive breaking news that we just got here from the Hawkeye of the Storm as Villanova transfer Lucy Olson has committed to the Hawkeyes. Huge, huge, huge. We'll talk about it in just a second. But first, I'm going to steal a page out of the book of none other than Kashin Alexander. Hit that like button, folks. Hit the thumbs up button right below this video. It does help the channel immensely. Make sure you're subscribed while you're at it. But just that like helps us. And be sure, folks, to tell your friends about all the content being produced here. Men's basketball, women's basketball, football, and more coming right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Help us to grow the platform. Hit that like button, folks. It does help. So the news of this hour, breaking news, Villanova Wildcat transfer. Lucy Olson has committed to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Lucy visiting Iowa this week. And this has been talked about here for a few days, and I was very hesitant to jump on that train. I did not have any secret intel, inside information on Lucy planning to commit, but it certainly sounded as if Iowa had an excellent chance of getting a commitment. And yes, they do indeed get this commitment from the third leading scorer in the country. Yes, third leading scorer in the country, Lucy Olson at 5'9 out of Collegeville, Pennsylvania. She has turned into a star for a team that doesn't have great recent history. I mean, in general, Villanova has been kind of a forgotten team in that conference out east. Obviously, UConn has dominated that conference for quite some time. Creighton's really uh, come up as of late, especially since they moved to the conference. But the Big East in general is not the strongest on the women's side. UConn has dominated the conference. And so Lucy's kind of been the forgotten woman in some regards, but she was Big East all freshman her first year at UConn. She's a two-time All-Big East performer, and she was the 2023-2024 most improved player in that conference. That says a lot, especially when you think about some of the talent at just UConn alone. She went from averaging in her sophomore year, she averaged 12.4 points per game. She went from 12.4 points per game to 23.3 points per game. Again, over 23 points per game. That's third overall in the country. She was AP Honorable Mention All-American. ESPN rated her as the fourth best player in the transfer portal. And Kyle Huseman of On3HawkeyeReport.com, our friends over at Hawkeye Report, doing a great job. He confirming that fourth best player in the transfer portal available according to ESPN. And listen to some of these numbers for Lucy. We talked about points per game going from about 12.5 to 23.5 from her sophomore year to her junior year. But also keep this in mind, she went from 7 points per game as a freshman to 12.5 her second year. She also went from 2.7 rebounds per game to 4, now to 5 rebounds per game this past year. Her free throw percentage year 1 was 60%. That went to 76% her second year. Now it's at 81%. Now she's taken more threes. Her three-point percentage dropped a bit. She shot 36% from three. Really solid number her sophomore year. She shot about 29, 30% her junior year, but she took over five per game, a very heavy load put on Lucy Olson as it relates to scoring. And just to kind of put this into uh, words or put this into motion for people to understand the burden that she took on for that Wildcat team, they scored 48 points their final game of the season in a Big East tournament loss, or I should say final Big East game of the season, a Big East tournament loss to Marquette. They scored 48 and she had 22 of them. So almost accounting for half of the team's points And uh, she also played 36.2 minutes per game, shot 49% from inside the three-point arc. Now, I have not gotten a chance to watch her um, in long-form content, I guess, if you will, and in complete games. I know shuffling through some highlights and looking at her film, she's got really good, almost sneaky shiftiness. And, um, you know, it's interesting as I kind of write down some notes in preparation for this video, I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to start making comparisons that seem ridiculous or like I'm living in the moment, but she sort of has the same style of game as what we've seen from Caitlin Clark. Now, I'm not saying she's the next Caitlin Clark, but as it relates to perhaps being a poor woman's version of Caitlin Clark, she's got a good step back. She's got good range from behind the three point arc. She can finish from everywhere, has good length and I mean she's only listed at five foot nine 
Um, but she does seem to be able to finish well, basically wherever she's at with good touch. She's got a decent wingspan and appears on tape. She's not like Molly Davis, if that's what you're wanting. I don't think Molly's probably even 5'9". She's probably closer to a 5'7". Really good handles. She's got the crossover behind the back as well. Very good passer. Her assist numbers uh, this past year weren't quite as good, but keep in mind the scoring burden uh, just increased as her career carried forward. And as I mentioned, that step back, just reminiscent of someone we've seen. But again, not trying to make direct comparisons, but I'm just saying style of play-wise, it looks like this is a move for this staff, to me, that screams, hey, we want to continue to play the way we've played. Now, it's going to be hard to emulate that. You don't have somebody, a generational like Caitlin Clark, come around really once, but every lifetime, two lifetime, three lifetimes. That's how great she was in college. But Iowa has lacked that consistent post presence at the five. Does that mean Hannah Stolke continues to play the five? I hope not. I hope Ava Hyden or maybe an Addison O'Grady, A.J. Ettinger, they get somebody in the portal at the five position. But I do think Lucy's ability to score, what she gives you with the backcourt, first of all, she's going to be a plug-and-play starter. It should help Iowa to be able to continue to play the way they've played. Because you just, I mean, there were huge question marks about who was going to play the point. I mean, we were talking about Leah Guyton, who's coming off an injury, who's going to be a true freshman next year. Kenise Johnson, who's coming off an injury, who's going to be a redshirt freshman next year. And then are you talking about a Callie Levine being a freshman? So they needed somebody in the backcourt. They may add another one. The scholarship numbers can get a little bit hairy. We'll talk about that, I'm sure, in future videos. But uh, just in general, really, really big, big addition for this Iowa women's basketball program. Congratulations to Lisa Bluter, Tania Davis, uh, Jan Jensen, this entire staff, Jenny Fitzgerald. They have done a very nice job here early in the portal. Now, what's available as it relates to NIL? Who knows? I'm sure Lucy is going to be profiting by making this decision but she should be an excellent compliment. And now you have really three cemented starters as it relates to Lucy Olson, Sydney Falter, Hannah Stolke. Those other two spots, I would say, are still very much up for grabs. We'll see what else they add. And I'm sure we'll talk about, we're going to have actually Kasheen Alexander on to talk about this edition. I know Kasheen's excited. I spoke with her prior to recording this video and her first reaction to watching Lucy Olson on tape after she entered the portal, her response to me was she does look like a Lisa Bluter type of player. And maybe that's, uh, you know, culturally, but also I think um, you know, it's hard to tell that on film. I think how she plays the game and obviously she's going to be able to fit into that fast paced uh, mentality. And again, what Iowa has been doing here over the last several years with Caitlin, I think you're going to be able to get some of that carryover with Lucy Olson and then the pieces they're adding uh, via their freshman class next year. So congratulations to the Iowa staff, and we'll see who else the uh, program adds here in the coming days, coming weeks, as the portal window continues to stay open. Appreciate you tuning in for another edition of the show. This is kind of a last-minute record. I did not know this news was coming down today. Thank you to, I think it was Talia Goodman, um, the first reporter to officially break this. We'll talk to you next time. Keep it locked right here. Like and subscribe here at the video, here in the platform from the Hawkeye of the Storm. We'll talk to you soon.